you think Common Ground is worth a buck, consider leaving a tip at lptv.org. Lakeland Public Television presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Okay, so we know that that's a dead end. I'm Tony. And I'm Linda Carter, and we'd love to have you visit our corn maze and pumpkin parties. Oops, I made a wrong turn. <laughs> we gotta go. We, we've turned too soon. we got to take the next break. So when you go up, you should see a great shot of Tony's scene of Itasca, some pine trees on each side, a loon in the middle, a canoe with two people in it, a father holding a little girl's hand pointing out um, some water. There's also kind of a mock-up of the headwaters sign that says the heart of Minnesota. I guess it appealed to me. I got like the, the nature and the uh, history of the Itasca park and the headwaters and it's kind of a, I was, like I say, look, looking to do it on Lewis and Clark, but I thought Itasca with the story of the explorers trying to find the headwaters is more, more relevant to our, our area. And the first year his corn maze was, I believe it was about four and a half acres and it was the state of Minnesota um, with a giant loon. Uh, last year he did George Washington on horseback, and this year the feature is on Itasca State Park. What he does is he has graph paper, the real tiny squares, and each square is a stalk of corn. And then they go out and the different flags are for different measurements, 10 rows, 50 rows, 100 rows, so that they could tell easily as they're cutting it out um, where they are in the graph paper. They kind of flagged it out flags and then he's using the slime to, to mark the boundaries, making an eagle here right now. He's marking out the borderline of this eagle. And he gets it all laid out and then we just take hose and take out the corn. When you go to cut the maze, you got to make sure you don't make a mistake because it's hard to correct. Once the corn's cut down, it's kind of, it's hard to go back and fix it. So yeah. It, I think it's a lot of work, but uh, it's looking pretty good. From, the, from what we saw from the air, it looks like it's looks like it's supposed to look. So it's always satisfying to see it from the air. See what see that it turned out right. I guess. They also cut the edges of the corn off so that oh, that's true. Don't get hurt. Yeah, well, it makes a sharper picture too. Um, they trim some of the leaves and things, so um, you know, because the edges of the corn leaves can be pretty sharp brushing against people. So they trim some of that. But well, we finished trimming the leaves, um, and then the maze is pretty much done. We're kind of get rid of some weeds. We got to make sure the trails are clear so people nothing for people to trip on and. I haven't done this fish yet, but I, I, this is all done. Bulk of the work is behind us now. I've got to keep watering it if it doesn't rain. That's it's been a, a lot of struggle this year to keep it watered because it hasn't rained for six weeks or so here. So it's um, the rain would be nice here, but. Uh, They put uh, little quiz stations in, um, uh, places for people to find, they, stations for people to find, and then they can punch their card and show that they've met and reached all the stations, and then that was also the quiz that they can try to complete. But I put quite a few signs out in the maze um, just to make it more interesting. Uh, 
quotations and jokes and stuff, maybe some other in interesting things out here. Try to make it more than just trails in the corn, try to make more, uh, make it more interesting, I guess. But. Just amazing how Mr. Carter put this all together and how well the Carters do at just providing history for us without even knowing that we're learning something. It was fun getting lost. It was somewhat challenging. It was awesome. Hey, Ginge. My husband's always been fascinated with corn mazes and uh, different contraptions. Um, he loves to do Rube Goldberg pieces. We have a pumpkin propeller that he made. Um, that's a Rube Goldberg contraption. His mind is unique. He has so much going on and so much creativity. Behind me is our mechanical scarecrow band that um, he came up with. We went down to Vallas in Omaha, Nebraska last year, and that's the largest pumpkin patch in the United States, the one that got them all started. And um, we were watching, looking at some of the things there, and he got the idea um, on a lower scale version. And um, he had the help of one of his workers, one of his teenage workers here, um, who's also very mechanically um, inclined and kind of collaborated on what they want, and Tony kind of oversaw quite a bit as Taylor was doing a lot of the work and um, went from there. Well, we started uh, real small with just a, um, here at our market, we had just a real small area to, to make a maze. And we, I, I think I was back when corn mazes were first starting in the, in the middle 90s, I think. Um, and we just built built a maze with corn. We hauled corn stalks in and set them up in a small maze. And I think for quite a few years we made real small mazes with fencing and a small plot of corn. And uh, yeah, and for quite a few years I was thinking about hey, what if we moved this to the farm and made it a real, the full size corn maze. Um, so that was in the back of my mind for a long time. And I thought it would be just better to have a big, a real corn maze, a big, a big full-scale one. Um, you could do more. You could do an actual design in it, and uh, hopefully it would attract more people. And, and so uh, eventually we made the, the move to do that. We weren't sure if it would work out. This is a nice, convenient location for people to come so we weren't sure if they'd we'd get fewer people at the farm or more but we, right away we got a lot a lot more people when we moved it to the farm and made it a bigger full-size corn maze with, I, mean, I don't think he realized what kind of turnout we would have um, I knew that it would be big I didn't we weren't expecting anywhere near what we got um, it was overwhelming and satisfying so and it's just grown since then Everything's bigger and better. We have a full wagon ride uh, rather than just a real small one, and a bunch of other, a lot of other activities. And I think it's a real farm. It's an actual farm. <clears throat> I think it's for some, a lot of people don't get a chance to really visit a, a working farm. So I think it um, maybe added to, added to the appeal. I think. Yeah. It is fulfilling. It's fun watching people of all ages, all different walks of life um, coming out, um, you know, traditional families and college students and um, just everybody from every walk of life and every age coming out and enjoying it. Our wagon ride, we used to do just a general wagon ride with a couple of skits in there, some scarecrows and things. This year he has a whole Hobbit theme on there. Um, complete with dwarves and elves and Gandalf and hobbits and all kinds of different stuff like that. So it's not just a relaxing hayride. There's a lot to see and do on it. And it goes back, his father and his grandfather also were quite um, inventive when it came to different farming techniques. Always looking for different, different angles on doing things um, more efficiently and more uniquely. 
it's hopefully kind of an adventure to find your way through and find you also know, find each of the quiz stations we have and um, hopefully they learn something about Itasca and the history and the wildlife and the uh, trees and all that and um, and hopefully have fun at the same time I guess. This is a great place to come. It's so much fun, birthday parties, there's so many kid activities, the um, actual for little guys, the corn, um, I don't know, puddle is what I call it, where kids are jumping in, the corn, and just having a blast. So, good food too. <laughs> If you have an idea for a common ground piece that pertains to north central Minnesota, email us at legacy at lptv.org or call us 218-333-3022. To view any episode of Common Ground online, visit us at lptv.org. order individual segments or entire episodes of Common Ground, please call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people on the 4th of November 2008.